Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. I'm Larry Chen, and we have a crazy build for you guys today. I don't even know what to say. I spent the last couple hours shooting this thing and pouring over every little detail, and we got the owner right here. How's it going? What's up? What's your name? Marco. Thank you so much for bringing this car out today for us to shoot. Sure, man. My pleasure, dude. My pleasure. This is an unbelievable build. I love these cars so much, love E-Types. I have a 240Z and that was kind of uh, inspired by the E-Type. You know, it has that similar shape. But this is actually not an E-Type, right? This is something that you built from scratch. So it's, it's technically a, a low drag coupe. Jaguar in, in the 60s for racing, they had uh, what they called lightweight E-Types, but they were all roadsters and they all had hard tops. And so Jaguar built one low drag coupe and there was another independent team that built another one just with their own aero touches and that was call, called 49FXN. And this is kind of a recreation of that one car. And this is one of two in the world. So it's, it's pretty special, this car. And in the morning, it's going on a trailer to Pebble Beach. Yes. Where the world will get to enjoy the beauty of this thing. Which, by the way, how long has it taken you to build this thing? Uh, I would say on and off, like eight years. <laughs> uh, this is not your, like, SEMA crunch two <laughs> weeks ahead. All right, we got to tear out the whole car. Let's just put it together. It doesn't run. This thing runs, drives, finished, looks amazing. Let's just do a quick walk around from okay, the outside. Cool. This body was built by RS Panels in the UK and they're like a coach builder and it was built literally from scratch. It was just flat pieces of metal. It's fully aluminum. It weighs, I think the monocoque weighs like 1500 pounds. So this car in total weighs 2000 pounds and it's got like 380 horsepower. So it scoots. RS Panels hunted down the original design team of the original car. One of the designers was living on an island off of Finland. You know, they just got the guy to come over. And they basically did from like old shots, the guy brought his old blueprints and everything. And they basically built this from scratch as a recreation of the original car. What are the major differences between like a normal E-Type street car? I don't think there is a single thing that would bolt onto this from a regular E-Type Jag, except maybe the door handles and the taillights. 49FXN had this NACA duct, which uh, actually feeds a ram air system into the side draft Weber carbs. The original car actually had a longer nose, but I had to shorten it a little bit just because I wanted to design a street car. The original was a race car, it's always been a race car, so the fact that it gets beat up or that the hood doesn't open is no big deal. But other than that, it's, it's actually pretty accurate to the race car. When I first saw the guys open up this hood, forget the parking blocks, you're gonna scrape the front just from opening the hood. Love that you still kept badges on it too. I'm a product designer, so I design all the badges myself. Uh, and it's been quite an ordeal, you know, to get them made. And I mean, there's just so many little details that I could pour over for hours on the car, you know? So tell me about the wheels. These look pretty special. So these are, actually they're cast magnesium. This is what the new Jags run at Goodwood and all the races. They're pin drive, just super light. If you look at them, you'll see a lot of cars in the period like Cobras, Jags, like E-Types, not Ferraris, but some other brands that they use the same wheel. It's cool that you're also using kind of like vintage looking tires too. I'm not just a vintage guy. I love all kinds of cars. I love modern cars. I'm a JDM guy as well, you know, like, and, but one of the things I bemoan is this whole 19, 20 inch wheel thing. So I love sidewall. I have an S2K and 17s all the way, no 18s or anything like that. So I love sidewall and these Dunlops. I mean, these, this is what the cars run at Goodwood and all the races. So I just think it gives the, it gives the car the look. Let's check out the interior. Sure. It uh, definitely has that new car smell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, new leather tends to do that. Original E-types wouldn't have had a glove box. They would have just had like a cubby hole there. So we built this from scratch. Uh, another emblem that I designed. This is actually out of a VW Bug. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, Hybrid. These switches uh, are actually 60s RAF airplane switches. Oh, I like that. I'd like to take credit for finding these, but I saw this on an old Aston. I think it was one of the project cars that had them, and I just thought they looked so cool. This car actually has an AC. Um, what the? How's that possible? 
it's it was difficult because it, when you open the clamshell there's no place to hide anything so it was very difficult i just that was just a challenge i wanted to give myself basically it's not modern car ac but it you know it does the job and so we made these swivel these are actually out of uh mid 50s cadillac these grills these would have gone on the exterior of the car in the back to feed air into the rear ac so we just basically appropriated the grills and we made these from scratch. These are super, uh, there's so much work went into that. So what about the steering wheel? So the steering wheel is, if you see normal E-type steering wheels, they're, they're pretty, you know, they're, they typically are chrome with holes in them. The wood rim is kind of thin. So I went with a whole custom theme here. That's actually a, a Jag XK140 horn pad which is an earlier car and it's so big, we had to machine the ring around it for it to fit. The wood wheel is actually uh, Aston Martin, but we did the spokes, uh, the jack sort of a PCD and the spokes, but we took the holes out and Motolita made that custom for me. So uh, it's pretty special. <laughs> that's, during, that's actually one of my favorite parts of the car. That is awesome. And you could take it off too, right? Yes, you can take it off, yes. <laughs> It's the only way to get into the car. So what about the gauges? They look amazing. I've never been a fan of like the Smith's gauges. I mean, they're, they're fine, you know, they come on all these Jags, but I loved uh, the Veglia gauges that came on vintage Ferraris and stuff. So normally on these Jags, these sweepers would have been inverted. So they would have sw uh, swept from the top. And so we inverted those. I put a little Jag, <laughs> Jaguar head there and you know, it's it's just it's a lot of fine detail and uh, you kind of have like a half cage going or roll, so roll cage. A, the original would have had a full cage and because it's more of a street car i decided to go with a, a roll bar it's triangulated it's you know it's bolted in it's it's a very safe roll bar but it's it's actually very needed on this car because this is actually based off of a roadster and all they do is they just put a roof skin on it to make it more aerodynamic but there's no structure above it but it's like the fit and finish of everything. You got the headliner, you got all these gussets and... Yeah, so these lightning holes were built in by the people that built the body. Uh, the race car would have had that. I kind of dug the look, so I just wanted to keep them. I know you mentioned that you love the side sills here. <laughs> yeah. Like what, what's so special about these side sills besides the design on it? The design was very difficult to actually hear. These are laser etched. We found a few people that would do it, but the, the quality wasn't high enough. So it took us a while to find somewhere. And then I was just, I was blown away by how good the pattern looks and how it sort of fades to the outside. I just love the little details that you're pouring over. Like something as simple as just the design on the sill, which you won't even see until you actually open doors. Totally. Kind of crazy, yeah. It's really cool. And like these lights, this is a cool story with these lights. These are actually out of, uh, I think a 65 Chevy. Uh, <laughs> but so originally the E-types would have had a pull on either side to open the clamshell. But because of the way this car is structured, there was no there was no way to do that. So we had this hole here, and so we just used it to place interior lights in them. Yeah, and it looks great. And uh, even the door hinges and everything are just so finished. That is just unbelievable. I love it so much. So cool. Really good job. Let's check out that engine bay. Okay. Yeah. So that's the thing is while it looks amazing the performance matches it oh unbelievable i like that they retained the square tubing mm -hmm. right because a That's lot the of front subframe that the e-types would have had yeah that is so cool and i, I kind of like that you know with it up you almost see it's almost like an open wheel car yeah uh chris harris has a great phrase i, I see him say it a lot of times is like you can see the gizzards of the car i love that yeah so <laughs> i think that works yeah, I mean, yeah that works with this gizzards. car especially yeah totally yeah. as you can see when you open it there's just nothing there you yeah. know there's nowhere to hide anything or anything it's a 3.8 uh competition spec uh you know xke engine same architecture as the originals but this is a brand new metallurgy brand new aluminum block it's by a company in the UK called Crosswaith and Gardner, and they sort of provide all these race engines for all the new sort of racing E-types and all that stuff. So, and these these engines were really cool because they're very reliable, you know. So, and how much are you power are you making out of this engine? Approximately, depending on the gas, you know, uh, with pump, just 91. I think it's around 370, 380. Wow, that is, that's 
got to be insane for something that weighs, I mean, how much does this weigh again? 2,000 pounds. Okay, all right, that's insane. You would be very brave to take this hunter track and just um, wheel this thing. This is so cool. It actually doesn't have modern, you know, Brembo's or Olin's. It's, it's original Jag stuff. So yeah, if you, uh, it works actually. It's just doesn't have the feel of modern brakes or anything like that. You have to think twice about it, you know. I just love how finished everything is. It's hard to tell at night, but there's so many little details. I mean, like look at the control arms, like. Yeah. Are those? So th that's a cool story. So these, these are original Jag units, right? Mm -hmm. But in period, they would have cut these lightning holes into them for the lightweight ease. So this was actually done just like the cars in period. So 49 FXN had an interesting kind of aero system. The laminar flow that would have created a low pressure system here. So it would have sucked air into the cabin. So that's what these were for. By the way, I'm not an aerodynamicist, so. <laughs> <laughs> it really is all function because uh, the NACTA duct really rams air into this intake and it goes right into the carbs and that's totally what the original car would have had as well everything seems like it's pretty period correct yeah including like the champion wire plugs and yeah oh this is oh that is just so cool looking unbelievable i mean you're using this material again we originally used the mesh for this back part here the reason it has a mesh in the back here is because if it doesn't, the pressure would just blow out the box. Oh. So it needs sort of holes to be able to, you know, to let the air come out a little bit. And it ended up being really cool, the gold mesh, so. That is so cool. I love like this design element too. Yeah, so the original car would have had that as well. But um, again, because I was trying to make this like a more refined street car, if you saw the original car, it just had like just a flat piece of metal. The mesh was like chicken wire. It was just kind of ugly. So we sort of recessed it in, put the, the wire mesh. We kind of just, we've made this cover like five times, basically. This is kind of the whole eight years thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you, you have all this time to make it. I love this license plate cover so much. It's like so cool that it continues the line of the car. Mm -hmm and you could still kind of tell that it's there. I don't think I've ever seen an E-Type with that cover on it. To me, it's always screamed for it. I just, it seems natural to have it. Um, but don't quote me on that. I, I've never seen one, uh, even in pictures, that has that, so. But I just think it's, it just makes the car. Yeah. It's just so cool. It's, it just makes sense because there's a, exactly. the area, it's like it, somebody took a bite out of it, exactly. right? It's and like then now you're filling it in. Yeah, that's so totally. cool. So let's check out the trunk. So, Oh, this is already, I'm already like geeking out over some, what's going on here. So origin, the race car, because it ran at Le Mans, they wouldn't have had time at pit stops to, you know, raise the trunk and put the, you know, fuel filler in. Yeah. So this was just a flap and they would just put it in there, you know, pump the fuel in and, you know, pull it out and fuel spilling everywhere, you know, and then they just, just slam it shut basically. So I wanted to sort of keep that kind of homage to the Le Mans stuff, but make it a little more refined. But it's cool because right underneath is the actual like exactly. finished filler cap, which my goodness, it looks so good under here too. When I just looked at this area, I just wanted to kind of incorporate all of this together in one shot. So you kind of have like an aircraft element to a lot of this. This whole mechanism was custom made. This car would have just had two Zeus fasteners on it. The actual fittings that with the spring, I think they came out of a, 330 Ferrari, a vintage Ferrari. Uh, but other than that, um, this is the way it would have been. You see these grills on the side. Again, this is to evacuate air. It's, they're connected to these grills on the outside. Oh, so they are functional. Yeah, they're totally functional, yeah. Unbelievable. Well, and the funny thing is, uh, I showed up, I saw the car, I got in the car, within minutes and I saw that it had one mile on the odometer. Really one mile. So just tonight you probably tripled or quadrupled or maybe more the mileage on this car. That is a first for me. I've shot, I don't even know how many cars. I've shot thousands of cars probably, but 
to shoot a car that has one mile on it is, is unbelievable. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much for showing us this thing. Thank you. Man, it sounds so good. What do you think? It's awesome. I love this thing. Look at the gauges. Oh. <laughs> That's a wrap.